The Conservation of Japanese Art Conservation of Paintings on Silk Nearly all traditional East Asian paintings and calligraphy are executed on substrates of silk or paper, both of which are thin and extremely fragile. For this reason, such works are reinforced on the back with linings made from several layers of pliable Japanese paper adhered with a starch paste. These linings form part of what we call mountings that allow such works to be displayed. The most common form of mounting is the hanging scroll. When put away, it is rolled up and placed in a wooden storage box for safety. East Asian paintings are mounted with a combination of materials, many of which are organic. Each of these materials responds differently to changes in humidity, expanding or contracting at different rates. Japan has hot summers with high humidity, a climate that makes these materials especially susceptible to deterioration. For this reason, paintings generally need to be remounted approximately once every hundred years. Let's look at how hanging scrolls were actually conserved and remounted. Before a painting itself is conserved, the old mounting is taken apart piece by piece. The many layers of lining papers reinforcing the back are carefully removed one at a time, along with any other remedial repairs added during previous conservations. Next, the painting itself is conserved. The surface of the painting is covered with dirt and grime accumulated over many years. So the first order of business is to clean the painting with water and blotting paper to remove any such dirt. Japanese paintings are generally painted with brilliantly colored mineral pigments mixed with a gelatinous animal skin glue called Nikawa. This medium is quite different from Western oil paints. When this animal glue deteriorates after many years, the pigments lift from the surface and fall off relatively easily. So another important first step is to consolidate any lifted pigments by applying an animal glue solution as an adhesive to vulnerable areas. Of all the conservation processes, one of the most difficult is removal of the first lining paper, which is attached directly to the back of the painting. This layer is extremely important because it forms the foundation that supports the artwork. If this first lining has lost its strength, it must be replaced. Without doing so, the fundamental problems of the painting's deterioration and damage will not be resolved. Various techniques are now employed to replace this essential layer of first lining paper without damaging the painting. The method used historically was to moisten the entire painting with water, soften up the paste holding the lining paper to the painting, and quickly strip off the lining. This method can prove difficult, however, if the lining paper has significantly deteriorated. It can also put excessive stress on the artwork if the pigments or the silk substrates are highly fragile or damaged. Nowadays, the painting surface is first protected by lightly applying several sheets of paper to the front side of the painting. Next, the first lining paper on the back is loosened up and removed bit by bit. This process takes time, so its labor costs can be high. Once the first lining paper has been entirely removed, the areas of loss are repaired 
with new silk infills. If such holes in the painting silk are left unrepaired, then an even surface can cause chafing when the scroll is rolled up, potentially damaging the artwork. To match the strength of the surrounding older silk, a special new silk that has been artificially degraded is used to make the silk infills. Once these repairs have been completed, the painting is lightly moistened and the protective paper placed over the front is carefully removed. Next, a new first lining paper is affixed to the back of the painting to reinforce it. Paintings on silk are translucent, so this first layer is dyed slightly to make it less conspicuous. The lining paper is coated with paste, placed over on the back of the painting and adhered by brushing across its surface with a special brush. Japanese paintings are mounted using a combination of paper and paste, and each process requires a different kind of brush, so these brushes are especially important tools for Japanese painting conservators. To further support the painting, Another layer of lining paper is applied on top of the first lining. Areas that may be susceptible to creasing or cracking are reinforced by carefully applying small paper strips that have been specially cut for this purpose. The areas with new silk infills are lightly colored to prevent the repaired patches from being overly conspicuous. The new infills are not in-painted with details supplementing the original brushwork. Instead, they are toned to match the surrounding silk or paper substrate. Next, the decorative parts of the mounting are added. The borders of hanging scroll mountings are faced with textiles, which are added around the newly lined and reinforced painting. These mounting fabrics serve both a visual function, framing the artwork, and a safeguarding function, since the borders protect the painting while it is hanging or rolled up. Another layer of Japanese paper is added to the back of the entire scroll covering both the back of both the painting and all the textile borders. With the addition of a hanging rod at the top, a roller rod at the bottom, and a few other elements, the hanging scroll is complete. conservation and remounting process is now finished. Mounting itself is a multifaceted art form that uses textiles, paper, and a range of other materials in addition to the artwork itself. Some of the fabrics and fittings used in own mountings are extremely rare and valuable, so they are often repaired and reused. This is a Chinese painting that was owned by a prominent daimyo lord in Japan during the Edo period. The mounting itself has historical value, so many of the previous mounting fabrics were retained when the painting was remounted. The techniques used to repair Japan's cultural properties are considered to be some of the most advanced in the world. The Conservation Center for Cultural Properties, on the premises of the Kyoto National Museum, is home to a number of highly specialized conservation studios within the historical city of Kyoto, which has long been the center of art conservation in Japan.
Today, however, many of the traditional materials and tools used in conservation work are becoming increasingly difficult to obtain. Going forward, in order to protect Japan's cultural heritage, we must take into consideration not only the conservation of the artworks themselves, but also the livelihoods of the craftspeople who make these tools and materials, ensuring that their skills and techniques are passed on to the next generation. <laughs>